Who's ever heard this phrase in your life? Do what I say and not what I do. <laughs> Who's ever heard that before in their life? Raise your hand. God doesn't act like that. Amen. Here's how God operates. His phrase is this. See what I do and do what you see. That means when God built the holy church that you are in now, not the building, but the soul-wrenching change that you experience, he doesn't want you just to keep it to yourself. He wants you to help the kingdom grow. Your takeaway from me today is this. I'm not done. I'm just getting started. Write that down, please. I'm not done. I'm just getting started. You know, you, you want to know why I don't like football? It's because, I don't know about you, but I wasn't designed to just watch. Amen. Come on, somebody. You know, I get excited. When I watch a football game, I end up breaking windows by screaming. You know what I mean? My wife walks in with bean dip. I tackle her. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm so excited. I'm not meant to just watch the game. I got to be in the game. And God's designed all of us not just to watch God grow trees. Come on now but that you would grow people yourself. Yeah. Here's a statement we have at our church, that anything living grows and everything that's growing reproduces itself. God has made you to grow, and so you must reproduce who you are. Something in our experience tells us that, Lord, I, I believe you, but not really. I believe you can use me, but not really. I believe you called me, but not for anything big, but may I just challenge the way you think for a second? Come on, How do you know it's not big? Jesus. How do you know that you're not designed in this very minute, in this very hour, in this very church to just rock the city and the county that you live in? How do you know God doesn't want to use you in a big way? Come on, come on now. You can't base your experience with God on your past experience. You got to base it on the very fact that he will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he wants you to launch out into the deep, you better get in your boat and get out of here. What would make Jesus stop and stare at you when you try to tell him, ah, I'll just give you that. He'll say, uh-uh. With men, it's impossible. With me on your side, this church could break loose in Central Florida. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 4, and I'll read it for you. It says, for as we have many members in one body and all the members have not the same office, verse 5, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members of one another. Every one of us belong to one another. We need what you have. Number two, it can't just be one of us. It must be all of us. And, and, and we read in, in Luke chapter 5, verse 7, look what happened. It wasn't just Peter. Look what happened, verse 7. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and what? And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't take this load God has for this church by yourself. You need people. Everybody needs to be out there with their boats. Ah! He says, he, when, when, when he held back his life, his resources, his money, his servanthood, his time, uh, I'll give you a little bit of my life. No, he didn't ask you for a little bit. Until a man takes up his cross and follow him, he says, listen, what does it profit you if you gain the whole fuck and lose? Yes. Don't give him nine and nine. Nine and nine and a half won't do. When we don't give God everything, we always lose something. Come on. That's true. Amen. God says, I want you to have, you're not done. Yeah, you won. I'm in your boat. I'm on your side. I'm with you. You pray to me, I answer you. Yeah, your life is covered, but you're not done. I'm not asking about one net. I need you to drop them all. If you would just look around, what if half of you just went out and invited one person? You would have to go to three services. Good God Almighty. Why not you? You have won. You've got a great building on a great parcel of land, but you're not done. 
Not until every man, woman, and child has repeated opportunities to hear and respond to the gospel of Jesus. Come on now.